In this video, we're going to start actually running some ROS nodes and using the ROS2 command line tool. Before we can run anything, we'll need to set up our environment. ROS uses a lot of environment variables to work under the hood. Rather than polluting your whole system with these values when you install it, ROS gives us setup scripts for opting into the ROS environment in individual terminals. To get this environment, we need to run this command. source opt ROS foxy setup.bash. Notice that the path to this setup file includes the name of our specific ROS distribution. You can actually have multiple versions of ROS installed and choose which one you're using at any given time by sourcing the appropriate setup file. The environment we get from this command is known as the underlay. When you start writing your own ROS code, you'll have to source additional setup scripts that provide what we call overlays to add your new code to the overall ROS environment. We're now ready to start using ROS. The main tool we use to interact with ROS is the ROS2 command line tool. Like most Linux commands, it provides documentation about itself that we can read using the help flag. Here you'll see a list of verbs or subcommands that we can use. These verbs offer introspection and control over nearly every aspect of the ROS system. I encourage you to take the time to explore everything this tool has to offer as you learn ROS. These tools can be very handy when you need to debug your robot. Let's start a ROS node so we have a running ROS system to poke at. We'll use TurtleSim, which is just a very basic simulator that gives us a ROS-controlled turtle to drive around. To start a node, we use the run verb. So we'll write ROS to run TurtleSim turtle sim node. We have to tell the command which package provides the node and the name of the node's executable. Here those are turtle sim and turtle sim node respectively. When we run this command, we get a little window with our very own turtle. We're officially running our first ROS node. Let's use our command line tool to inspect this node. First, we'll open up a new tab with this button in the top left corner. Now we're in a new terminal session, so we need to source our underlay setup script again. Source opt ros foxy setup.bash. Now we can use our ROS tools in this tab too. We'll start just by listing the names of all the current running nodes with ROS2 node list. And we just get TurtleSim, as that's the only node we've got running at the moment. To get more information about this node, we can use the command ROS2 node info. We have to tell it the name of the node we're interested in, and then it will give us a list of all the connections this node supports. We can see all the topics, services, and actions used by the node. We pretty much always need to run more than one node at a time. Individually running and configuring each node separately isn't really feasible. To coordinate bringing up multiple nodes like this, ROS gives us the launch system. We can use the command ROS to launch to load a launch file that defines what nodes to start and how to set them up. TurtleSim gives us an example launch file called multisim.launch.py. So we'll go back to our first tab, stop the currently running TurtleSim node with control C, and run the command ROS2 launch TurtleSim, the package that gives us the launch file, and multisim.launch.py, the launch file we want to start. When we hit enter, we'll get two new instances of the TurtleSim simulator. To round out this demo, let's use the command line tool to send a message that will make our turtle move. To do this, we'll use the topic verb. Let's go back to our second tab, and we'll use the command ROS2 topic list to show us the list of running topics right now. This list shows us all of the topics in our current ROS system from all of the nodes. Notice that we see the topics from both of our TurtleSim instances, and they use namespaces to group each simulator's topics. The one we'll use right now is TurtleSim1, Turtle1, Command Velocity, or CMDVEL. To send a message on this topic, we'll use ROS2 Topic Pub. We have to tell it what topic we want to use and the type of message we're going to send. Then we'll need to give it all of the values for the fields in the message. Messages can get kind of long, so it's nice to use the terminal's autocomplete functionality to generate the template for us. When we double press the tab key, the terminal will show us the flags and other options we can use at this point in the command. In these options, we can see the structure of a geometry message's twist message. To get this in our command, we can type double quote L and double press tab 
for the terminal to give us the rest. The L here was just because that's the first letter in the message structure. Giving the terminal that letter rules out all of the flags that start with dashes. Now we can set the linear x velocity to some number, say 1. And when we hit enter, our turtle moves. We can see that the tool is sending a new copy of our message once every second. As with many of the ROS2 commands, there are several flags we can use to tweak the behavior. For example, here we could add the once flag to only send one message on the topic. Our turtle then only moves a little before stopping again. And that's all for this video. We've run our first ROS nodes and used the ROS2 command line tool to interact with our ROS system. We've only just scratched the surface of what this tool can do. We'll definitely see more of this tool throughout the training, but it'll be worth your time to poke around at the other verbs and flags that we don't cover to learn everything it can do.